Hey you, it's true. And we got a little bit bamboozled by Sigza again because while we had a stealth Dark Kaguya as a boss in the current event, in the playable version we are actually now getting yet another fire unit. Honestly, it makes sense because uh, we would have had like five stealth units in a row now. And fire Kaguya can complete the 2025, the 2024 burn platoon. Now, her speed is average at 405, although for a burn unit, this is still on the higher end of the recent top burn units. Only Lubu has higher speed. And we directly jump to her first skill. Lantern Flare costs zero spirit, 100 time units and damages one enemy. If Kaguya is already burning, then this actually deals 500% damage and if not, she at least gains the burn status effect. Allies gain spirit equal to the number of burning units on the battlefield after this attack. So this is a burning spirit as well. And you will see that the similarities to the 2023 unit Commander Astrid don't end there. Next up, we have a very powerful attack all instant skill costing just two spirit and it's called Trail of Flames. 200% damage to all enemies, 400% to each burning target and 600% damage to each guardian. This skill easily unlocks each time Kaguya damages an enemy with another attack. So either her first or third skill. The rather unfortunate thing is that this skill is only usable if there is an enemy guardian on the battlefield. But since Kaguya seems to be destined to become a dawn unit for any strong burn team, that should at least at first be the case rather often. I already mentioned that her third skill also deals damage and quite a lot of that. It is a powerful skill. Meteor Strike costs three spirit, 100 time units and targets two enemies for 600% damage and if that wasn't enough it also stuns them for 100 time units each. This is especially powerful because this attack ignores stealth, counter stance, skin passive skills and revenge passive skills. She does need to have the burn status effect to use Meteor Strike. Very good stuff especially with the passives that we are yet to cover. But first we are looking at her final skill which is Lantern Festival, giving one spirit, costing 50 time units and affecting all allies. Well, okay, I spoke too soon here because it only affects those allies with the Burn Blast or Burn Drive type active skills. So really only the other Burn allies that she runs with on the battlefield. All of them are granted the Burn status effect and a permanent 30% quicken. This is nice, but of course a lot of recent burn units already come with some quicken effect in some form, but still quite nice. And if all allies are burning, Kaguya will also get the mega healing burn for 100 time units. This skill becomes locked for 150 time units after use and is only usable if the user is not burning. So a lot of restrictions placed on this one. It is a very good skill, but not mind-blowingly so. Of course, the Mega Healing Burn is especially nice for Kaguya. We have already seen this on some other burn units. Given that Mega Healing Burn cannot be overwritten by Sleep or Poison and in combination with her passives, some units might struggle quite a lot to take this Fire Kaguya out. Enough teasing of the passives now, we are finally covering them. The first one being Burning Moon and granting a random enemy this burn status effect after each enemy turn if no enemy is burning already. So this is kind of a nice callback to the original Earth Kaguya's skill set who cursed sleep enemies in the same way. Of course, this isn't as powerful of an effect, I would say, but still a nice to have. And especially it isn't scaling based on awakening. So even a one copy of Kaguya can already do this for you. And a lot of other stuff as well, because at dawn, all allies with burn blast or burn drive type active skills gain the burn status effect. And if all allies have the burn status effect, this unit gains mega healing burn for 100 time units right away, right at the start of the battle. Doesn't even need to get a turn for that. So this is a really nice effect if you run her in a pure burn team. This is not feasible 
for any hybrid type teams. And the synergy with burn units doesn't end there because whenever Fire Kaguya or a burning ally gets a turn, she will automatically heal 30% of her max HP. And the third paragraph is where it gets spicy, especially for arena play, because if this unit is burning and has defeated three or more units with attacks while on the battlefield, Fire Kaguya will become a permanent executor. So all of her attacks ignore any effects of non-boss enemies that will pr prevent them from being defeated. This is very insane if you think back about the active skills that she does have. The three kills are quite a high requirement uh, comparatively, but afterwards she is off to the races and then becomes the best executor a burn team currently can have. Switching to the second passive, we have Luna Focus. As you can already tell by the by the name of the passive, you already saw it coming. And of course, with the fire element, she is permanently stun immune. She also comes with a burning heart because she cannot be defeated by damage from burn status effects. Interestingly, she has a non-burn armor. So whenever she is not burning, then she at least has the 50% damage reduction from attacks if she is also not sleeping. But if she is burning, then she has some other defense material to work with. She has a hold ground and that one HP that she is left with cannot be broken by burn as well. So she will keep burning afterwards, maybe even healing burning and then it can be very annoying to kill her off. If she is burning, she also becomes permanently evasive. So any attacks that would target exactly two targets will be ignored by her. And of course, you might have already seen it coming given that the time units are not that low on her. If she is burning, she has a 40% quicken, which makes all of these skills much, much faster and better as well. Here we have an example battle featuring burn versus stealth. Many of the newest units are on the left side here. We have uh, Hitikata, Napoleon and Okita. But Mordred is already down to the revolution of Napoleon. Very well played from them. Um, but let's see how this battle goes. I mean, we see that... Most of them, except Storm King Arthur, are getting stunned to hell. But now we have Hichikata entering. And wow, she is a really, really strong Cerberus counter, one has to say. And that means only three burn units left against the four stealth units on the other team. But now Libu is getting a bit crazy. And we do see Fire Kaguya getting some action in as well, stunning some enemies so that the burn team can go wild. The problem now is that Hichikata is already below 100 time units, so the next hit will probably give her the turn. But first, um, it looks very bad for Okita, who is nearly down. Yeah, that means she is gone now. And Libu doesn't quite manage to kill off Hichikata, who in return kills her off. And that means we are left with a 2 versus 2. Uh, Scratch that, we are left with a 2 versus 1. Fire Kaguya, the only one left standing on this burn team. But unfortunately, Kaguya only unlocks a permanent execute after three kills, which she obviously didn't get in this battle. That means she is left without executes. But the same is true for Hichikata, who can only execute guards. And that means uh, she's really struggling against the mega healing burn here of Kaguya who pulls off another lantern festival but just doesn't die because of the burn hold ground that is always resetting as soon as she recovers some HP due to the healing burn. And so we can see Hichikata really really trying to kill off uh, Kaguya here but uh, she keeps standing. Of course against some other units Kaguya wouldn't perform as good in this situation but in this one it looks very good for her now. Hichikata is left without charges and that means she is gone now, finally. But Storm King Arthur, the latest number one unit, is still standing. Uh, basically just waited for the whole battle, um, given the hold ground and uh, lack of executes directed at him. Uh, at her, of course. And so, um, yeah, this might actually take... <laughs> a while uh, as you can see none of, uh, neither of them are really 
giving up. Uh, what is really kind of saving Storm King Arthur here, I would say, is the King's Dawn, which gives her the damage reduction. And that means that Kaguya isn't really able to kill her off, even with her attacks. Doesn't get her quite to the whole crown plus. I mean, now she does, but it's too inconsistent. She would really need to use up the king's shields uh, and this isn't what we see happening here. Thanks to Anonymous for providing this battle preview in an arena environment. Despite being clearly a missing puzzle piece for a burn 2024 platoon, Fire Kaguya might struggle to change the arena meta completely to another burn rain like Commander Astrid did over one year ago even though her si skill set is very similar and of course very much improved over that older burn unit. That said, if she manages to pull off three kills in arena, then the enemy team is truly in hell going forward. What can be said on the other hand is that she will definitely improve burn plats in war performance further. This is really tricky to deal with. Even on defense, these burn teams might pull off some upsets together with Fire Kaguya. There are certain weaknesses though, especially against water units like Musashi and Cinderella. I'll add a summon or skip segment to this video because why not? It is just so straightforward that I can't pass up on the opportunity and I don't think a separate video is needed to cover this or even experiences in top level arena because if you run a burn team, if you main a burn team, then she is definitely a unit that you want to get. Even if you can only get one copy, she already provides value at that level. Of course, do not go below Lucky Fountain Threshold. As for any other teams, especially those that are heavily featuring the prior Kaguya, who coincidentally absolutely hates encountering burn, this fire Kaguya is a clear skip. Only exception here is if you like the art or if you are a whale or if you are building a P4 burn platoon for arena. But honestly, the dawn effect is quite necessary. So I reckon this would more be geared towards war. So if you want to have that, then you can also get fire Kaguya. Thanks to Helios for the skill animations. That's it for now. Like and subscribe. All that good stuff. I much appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.